Hey, Wayne Fox. A few weeks ago, I did a video about this pretty cool little uh, two terabyte SSD Thunderbolt 3 made by Otherworld Computing. Uh, like it quite a bit. It's really fast. It's really built solid, I guess you could say. It's, it's metal. It's hard. Pretty rugged. The only thing I have decided I sort of don't like about it, I'm, I get a little nervous. I thought I could take this rubber case off and I assume this is unplugged and I can't really tell, but it, it doesn't look like it does that. And I'm afraid to try. I'm going to write OWC. But the problem is if something happens to my cable, I just can't buy a new cable. So I, I'm not really a fan of hard drives that have a built-in cable and don't have a connector. Now, there might be some advantages sometime, but just so that's personal preference. Anyway, some of my friends told me that these is, this is a little pricey for them. And they don't actually do video, so they don't know if they need any that, anything that fast. There's a lot of uh, USB SSDs. Uh, USB 3 SSDs that have uh, showed them on the market, quite a few different brands. Some of them are built more like this, really, really solid. So I watched 20 YouTube videos, talked to a few people, and I thought I'd just do a video about the one that I think is probably the best, and I'm going to unbox it, run it through the tests, and then, you know, in the comments below as I go through time, I'll just add any negative or positive things I find about it. But anyway, after looking at all the ones online, the one I think is probably the best for photographers is this uh, SSD by SanDisk. Now, most of us if photographers are quite used to buying SanDisk. I know I use SanDisk cards and they've been pretty reliable. Uh, SanDisk has a pretty good history as far as uh, non-volatile memory. And so this one made a lot of sense. So let's pop this baby open. One nice thing about this compared to this one, it's not. it's a little more than half the price and that's Kind of why I thought we'd, uh, why I'd bring it up. Well, my new knife must, I maybe need a new blade in my knife. There we go. Um, so this one I think is $5.99, weighs about 11 ounces. And I can tell right now this one weighs a lot less than this one. And it's only like $3.29. That's for a two terabyte version. Uh, here's the cool part. Notice the size. So I have two terabytes two terabytes this thing probably weighs like two ounces it's got a cool little hook in it so you can put it on a chain or something and let me tell you the reason I sort of decided I like this one the best yeah it's it's light enough that if you drop it it's probably not going to be too bad it's got a little bit of a rubbery feel to it especially the back so it's easy to grip and it's water resistant and dust resistant and so I don't know that I need four more ounces to get me a metal case just so that it's supposedly more rugged when in fact this, I'd be surprised if this is a pretty rugged. Anyway, let's throw this on the Mac. Let's run it through some Blackmagic speed tests. We'll compare it to this one as well as a typical hard drive like I did before. This is rated at 500 megabytes a second. So it's slower than this, which is up to 2,500. But my little twin rate hard drive is rated only, only got to about 100. So we're talking five times faster than a little RAID hard drive. And a lot of people only have little single uh, drive hard drives. And so they're only getting 40, 50 megabytes a second. So I'm guessing for most photographers, this would be a pretty sweet deal. Anyway, let's go take a look at how it performs. Okay, so here again, I'm going to load up Blackmagic uh, disk test. And to start with, I have my two terabyte Thunderbolt 3 drive hooked up. So we'll run that through the test again. And, we'll... and this time I'm probably gonna let the test run uh, five times. It seemed to make a difference last time. So 2,000, 2,400, 2,000. This is what I've noticed on the third pass, the read speed slows way down. And I'm not sure what that's all about. Write speed's always fine. And then the read speed pops back up. I need to write uh, OWC and just see if I can figure out what's going on there. Anyway, still really fast. So we're going to hook up the new SanDisk one real quick. Okay, let's go back to Blackmagic here. And we're going to go to the SanDisk Extreme SSD. And let's uh, see how it does. It's supposed to do 500 write and 500 read 
So 483, 521 on the first pass, 481, 520 on the second. So it's pretty consistent. Looks like it's going to give me about the same speed on each pass. And you'll notice if you look down in the box below, I'm handling a lot of normal video. I mean, yeah, it probably can't handle 4K if you're trying to do the 10-bit YUV, but uh, I mean, it'll even handle 4K 60P uh, ProRes. So it's it's still going to handle video pretty good. So let's just compare real quick to my normal hard drive or my old hard drive. And now I've loaded up my Lasai or Lacey or Lassie. I don't know how you say it. This is a portable hard drive. You've seen them. They have kind of the orange rubbery case around them. And I call this, we'll use, we'll use this uh, portable data version. It's actually partitioned into three versions. This basically it's two regular platter type hard drives that are uh, put into a RAID zero to give it more speed. And we'll hit start. And one, 170, 200. So even the USB-C SanDisk is considerably faster. It's two and a half times faster, both read and write, it looks like to me. Close to that anyway. So you definitely, you know, you've got two terabytes. It weighs about one ounce versus about, I don't know, eight or 12 ounces for the hard drive version, maybe even more. I can probably fit uh, six or eight of these little SanDisk ones in the same amount of space as the old a Lasai drive that I used, or even in the two terabyte OWC Thunderbolt drive, maybe even more than that. So it's actually a pretty awesome little drive. One thing I can't find out is what actual SSD module any of these are using, whether they're all using proprietary ones. I have a feeling that most of these little USB-C SSDs are using the same module or a couple of modules. I'm guessing Samsung makes theirs. So I think the big difference is really in the packaging and not in the specifications themselves. And so that's the reason I picked the SanDisk. I just thought it was small, light, convenient, and affordable. I might uh, mess around with the test later on, and I'll just do a little short video about that and actually do a real-world test. I know these, it, it would be interesting to see if I can pick up a difference in something like a major Lightroom import. So I might, uh, I might actually clone these two drives, and then uh, when I've got a big card, you know, with 100 or two or 300 shots from my gfx or my phase one camera or my even my sony 42 megapixel camera you know maybe maybe try to see if i shot in 500 shots see if there's really any difference at all because that's really what all that matters it could be that for photographers this is all the speed you ever need even if you're trying to get the most speed you can it could be that things like Lightroom really just can't take advantage of it well that is it for the video almost let's let me just show you you do, you do get a couple of cables it comes with a USB-C to USB-C cable, and then it has a uh, traditional style USB-3 adapter. So you can plug it into uh, either straight into your Mac, or if you've got a different computer and you need a normal USB. -C. So cables work for either kind. The uh, the two terabyte version right now on Amazon is going for three thirty nine. There's a one terabyte version that's only one eighty nine. And if you just need a little extra storage, you want pretty fast storage, you can actually get a 500 uh, gigabyte version for only 89 bucks. And they, ma they make a 250 gigabyte version, but I don't, I don't know why anybody would want, want to buy that one. I mean, why bother? Might as well get something a little more. Anyway, pretty cool. Uh, as I use this over the next month, I'll put comments if I come across anything negative or positive. I will throw a link down there if you want to go grab one on Amazon. And if you want to see some of the other videos, there are several pretty good ones that compare five or six of these devices. After I saw that all the work they went into them, I thought, you know, I really don't need to uh, spend, you know, a couple thousand bucks so I can do one like theirs. I just evaluating everything that they said. I personally think this is a really, really good choice for photographers. I said, I should have waited. I bet it's, I bet it's less than two ounces. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. See ya.